Welcome to Answers in Jubilees, produced by The God Culture. In our Sabbath series, we bring in Jubilees, some, but really this book begins with Sabbath and law and ends with it. All concurs with Torah and it must. However, we seem to have lost the calendar as a whole these days, just as Jubilees warned we would thousands of years ago. But not just generally, even key events. For instance, in our Sabbath series, we restore what Jubilees calls the start of the day, and we find it matches abundant references in Torah, the Tanakh, the Old Testament, and the New Testament even. And that's all right there. Check it out. It's been right there all along, but we have been told about a different calendar which doesn't actually match Scripture. Watch our Sabbath series, especially parts 6a through g, as we prove that out. Not dealing with that here. However, a very good question arose. As we find Messiah was crucified, not on Passover evening, Abib 14, but the next day, Abib 15. Many are looking for Messiah's sacrifice to match that of the Passover lamb. Oh, he is the Passover, no doubt, and we'll cover that too today. But they are looking for the wrong calendar. For Messiah was foreshadowed in covenant by Isaac, son of Abraham. And that is the measure, not the lamb. That's the calendar that he's following because it's a calendar of covenant. Now, we will explore this in this video being released just in time for Passover this year, but good any time. In fact, we reversed parts 6 and 7 for this reason, and 6 will run next week, kind of out of water, but uh, you will see this one labeled 7. We're not going to change that because we felt this so important, and 6 is already there waiting its time to be viewed, in fact. Let's resolve this once and for all with the Book of Jubilees. Get out your copy of the Book of Jubilees and let's begin reading in chapter 17, verse 15. And it came to pass in the seventh week, in the first year thereof, in the first month in this Jubilee, So the first month, that's Abib, or modern Nisan. This is the Passover month, or right now, as we are recording this video, in fact. Now, it gets more specific. On the 12th of this month, remember, Passover is the 14th. Now, so Abib 12 is where we are in this passage so far, and it will progress. There were voices in heaven regarding Abraham, that he was faithful, in all that he told him, and all that he told him. Wow. And he loved Yahuwah, and that in every affliction he was faithful. Mm, man, wouldn't it be nice if we could have that said about any of us, right? And the prince Mastema, now that's Satan, we'll cover in a later video how the word actually leads to the very same, came and said before Yahuwah, Behold, Abraham loveth Isaac his son, and he delighteth in him above all things else. Bid him, offer him as a burnt sacrifice, a burnt offering, on the altar. And thou wilt see if he will do this command. And thou wilt know if he is faithful in everything wherein thou dost try him. Now, before anyone thinks this strange Go back and remember, go read the book of Job. This is exactly what Satan, the accuser of the brethren, did in Job. So the precedence is scriptural and not questionable in any sense. Verse 17. And Yahuwah knew that Abraham was faithful in all his afflictions. Wow. For he had tried him through his country and with famine and had tried him with the wealth of kings and had tried him again through his wife when she was torn from him and with circumcision and had tried him through Ishmael and 
Hagar, his maidservant, when he sent them away, and in everything wherein he had tried him, he was found faithful, and his soul was not impatient, and he was not slow to act. Hmm. For he was faithful and a lover of Yahuwah. Watch how quickly Abraham responds to Yah's voice here. Chapter 18, going to the next chapter, verse 1. And Elohim said to him, Abraham, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here am I. And he said, Take thy beloved son, whom thou lovest, even Isaac, and go unto the high country and offer him on one of the mountains, which I will point out unto thee. Now notice, Abraham did not waste time here. He was not slow to act. He was going to be obedient no matter what. See, he already knew the prophecies of Isaac. Remember that. And he knew that if he struck him down, that Yahuwah had a plan to raise him up. And he rose early in the morning and saddled his ass, the donkey that is, and took his young, two young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood of the burnt offering. And he went to the place on the third day. Third day. Note this. Now we'll count this so you'll see. And he saw the place afar off. So he's there on the third day, ready to offer Isaac as a sacrifice. Let's see where we are. So let's start counting. He left on the 13th, because remember, that was the next day after Yahuwah spoke to him on the 12th. First thing in the morning, he left. One day of travel, the 14th represents two days of travel, and then... Now we'll bring this home. The third day is the 15th. Notice not the 14th, the 15th. This is the marker for Messiah's crucifixion, not the slaughter of the lamb on the 14th. This is the covenant being fulfilled. That covenant is not the Passover of the 14th. It is the day Isaac was offered, which must be the same day Messiah is offered. So on the 15th, verse 4, and he came to a well of water, and he said to his young men, Abide ye here with the ass, donkey, and I and the lad shall go yonder, and when we have worshipped, we shall come again to you. Did he just lie? No, he knew that Isaac was coming back with him, whether he had to be raised from the dead or not. Understand that. The Genesis account is very similar. Five. And he took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac his son. And he took in his hand the fire and the knife. And they went both of them together to that place. Messiah was sacrificed on the feast Sabbath on the 15th, not the 14th of Passover evening. Remember, he told his disciples where to get the Passover lamb and to slaughter it for dinner that evening. And he said he would have Passover with them. They had dinner that evening. And this was the famous communion offering as well. Some try to say, oh, well, he skipped dinner. Uh, that's not what he said he was going to do, and it's not what he did. It happened according to Scripture and the timing, really. It was a Passover Seder, period. There's no discussion on that, really. Not a debate at all. There is no reinventing it. I know some have tried because they view the wrong calendar and they try to force it as a fit. It doesn't fit, but it doesn't fit because it's wrong. Jubilees affirms this as it is Isaac, whom the covenant timeline must match here. And this is before Egypt. Now, one more thing to note while we're here. When was Isaac born? Well, he was born the same day as Messiah as well. Again, Messiah was fulfilling the covenant with Abraham, and Isaac is that measure. Check this out. Turn with me back to 
Jubilees 16, verse 12. And let's read this together. And in the middle of the sixth month, Yahuwah visited Sarah. Just so happens that that is the same month that Gabriel visited Mary, the sixth month. Note the middle, which means he'll be born in the middle of the third month. Ah, what is that? We'll talk about it. And did unto her as he had spoken, and she conceived, just as Mary. And she bare a son in the third month, and in the middle of the month. That's called, on the Hebrew calendar, Shavuot, or Pentecost. And that is also the birth of Messiah proven in our When Was Jesus Born videos. Check those out. As he must in order to fulfill the covenant. Born on that same day as Isaac and sacrificed on the same day as well, as this is the covenant with Yahuwah and Abraham that is being fulfilled. That's the timeline. And there is no other. At the time of which Yahuwah had spoken to Abraham, we're still reading, on the festival of the first fruits of the harvest, Isaac was born. The first fruits offering, now that's when the priest waves the sheaf back all the way in the Passover season. Um, that's in Abib. But the actual feast, that's the offering, the feast of first fruits is Shavuot, Pentecost. And that's basically in the month of June, could be even July. Remember, Messiah declared he is Lord of the Sabbath. He was born on the feast Sabbath of Shavuot. He was crucified on the feast Sabbath of Passover on the 15th, unleavened bread. And he resurrected on the weekly Sabbath, which is also the first fruit offering Sabbath. It's all about Sabbath and always has been. The church will never see this because it is too busy ignoring the Sabbath and demonizing it as passed away along with the Old Testament when no such ever occurred as the Lord of the Sabbath never abolished it and he would be the only one who could, but instead he reinforced it many times, even all the way through to Revelation. So there ain't no abolishing it. Again, watch our Sabbath series. We deal with that in great detail. Now, in our Sabbath series, we fully break down the gospel accounts and their timeline, which you see on screen, which matches what we just found in Jubilees. Jubilees is a key to Bible interpretation, and without it, one will never understand the Bible. Watch it for yourself, and we'll link it at the end of this video. But as you see on screen, and again, we are not proving this out in this video, so don't attempt to debate here something you haven't even reviewed, and you'll just be muted on this channel. We have had enough games with ignorant trolls, and we'll take charge of our platform and our stream. Thank you. See, everything must tie. And anyone trying to tell you Messiah actually meant, well, uh, no, no, he meant four days, not three three in the grave. Well, they simply don't believe Scripture, and they are undermining the whole of Scripture when they do so. You don't take the words of Messiah and try to change them. There's something very wrong with that, and it doesn't mean that their intentions are bad. These are good people who are trying to find the truth. The reason he said what he said, how he said it, is because it is brilliant, methodical, and very purposeful. He preserves his calendar. Jubilees is part of that. And we will go deeper into that topic throughout this series as well. So Messiah was born, timed with Isaac on Shavuot, Pentecost, in the third Hebrew month in the middle, which is about June on the Roman calendar. It floats uh, on our calendar today uh, as it doesn't reconcile quite. Yes, the apostles most certainly did celebrate his birthday. Anyone that says, oh, they didn't celebrate his birthday. Yes, they did, because it is a feast day. It's Shavuot. They were gathered even after his ascension, doing exactly that 
on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came. Very appropriate. He was sacrificed on the same day that Isaac was offered, on the 15th of Abib. Just as Paul says, Messiah is the Passover. And he resurrected on the next Sabbath, which is the first fruits offering, as Paul tells us again. He is our first fruits offering from among the dead. The spring feast calendar has Yahusha written all over it. Not to abolish it, as the word fulfill never means passed away anyway, but to keep it as we all still should today. We hope you will observe the Passover, unleavened bread for the seven days following, where we rid our homes and diets of leaven or yeast, a rising agent. That's the symbol of hypocrisy, uh, malice, and other things as mentioned. Uh, of the Pharisees, Sadducees, they were sad, you see, and even Herod, the politician. So in other words, hypocrisy of religion and government. But of course, we don't deal with that today, right? Thank you for watching another Answers in Jubilees. We hope you have learned something from this video and most of all, from your journey into the book of Jubilees. Yah bless to all. The book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar named by the temple priests in Qumran as the source of the exact determination of how to keep Torah's calendar in the Damascus document. Yes, they called it Torah and used it as such. This book renders the very first map of the world, the most ancient geography in all of history. Jubilee is also known as the Book of Division, as Noah partitions the entire earth to his three sons, finds the Garden of Eden in the Philippines, pinpoints the seat of Gog of Magog's power, demonstrates continental divides originate with Noah and much more. It is the second witness to Genesis and Torah and concurs. It tests as Torah and we encourage you to review this full test for yourself in the beginning of this book. It was the priests who were exiled from the temple who lived in Qumran, known in Bible times as Bethabara, where Messiah was baptized and John the Baptist of temple priestly caste lived and operated. As these were his fellow Levite priests exiled from the temple, who continued to keep scripture there, as well as operate a function, compound, modeled in part after the temple. This is the only historic library of precedence for the Old Testament canon in ancient history, yet explained away in willing ignorance, just as 2 Peter 3 warned. Based on the R.H. Charles translation from the Ethiopic, this book will enlighten and its revelation will rock your world. As all 50 chapters appear in this book with curated and edited margin notes, in large print Bible format, easy to read. This 288 page quality paperback has a high resolution section of maps that represent the world's oldest map by Noah. Read it and test it for yourself, and you will likely find, as we have, this book is inspired, and even canon, in history. Available free worldwide in ebook or purchase a print copy today on Shopee Philippines or Amazon internationally. Just go to bookofjubilees.org and the links are there for your area. We also offer bundle pricing with our other books in the Philippines. Our books are already expanding now, being read in 52 countries and more than half of the provinces in the Philippines. Join thousands who are finding this useful in their lives.